Good afternoon. I'm Chef Miles Hoff. I am the Dean of the Culinary and Hospitality Program here at Culinary Institute of the South, the Technical College of the Low Country in beautiful Bluffton, South Carolina. Today we're going to share, I'm going to share three of my favorite seafood dishes with you since we're right on the coast, really close to Hilton Head in Savannah. We're going to talk about crustaceans and we're going to talk about mollusks. Uh, obviously a uh, crustacean has a hard shell like a crab, a shrimp, a lobster, and then you have on your mollusk side we have uh, oysters, these are selects, and we also have mussels which also includes clams. So um, as you can see these are, these are called selects. And these are beautiful oysters, local oysters that we get, and um, I'm going to show you a quick dish with those. And going back over here, we're going to talk about the shrimp a little bit. There are two basic uh, shrimp that we get local, and that is the brown shrimp and the white shrimp. This is the, the white shrimp. These are about 20, uh, 2630, so basically you got about that many per pound, 26 to 30 per pound, and um, then with the mussels. The mussels, you can always check to make sure we're going to clean these. A lot of them will have beards and you're going to clean that beard off. But you also want to make sure that the mussels, they smell like the sea. And if you tap them, make sure they're nice and closed. That means they're alive. It's the same thing with the oysters. You want to make sure they're nice and closed and, and that ensures that they're going to be alive. So um, also with the oysters, just want to really show you really quick. Uh, this is an oyster knife. And this obviously has a point on the end and it's very blunt and very strong, very sturdy knife for that. This is actually, it looks almost like a paring knife, but this is a clam knife. And you actually open the clam um, with these. But I just wanted to show you the, the, the difference between the two. And quickly, I do want to uh, show you quickly how to open an oyster if you've, never, if you've never done that before. So you take a look at the oyster. You always look at the hinge. Obviously, with your um, with with your oysters, you never want to go from this side. This side is really sharp, and a lot of times, oysters also can come in clusters, uh, depending on what you're using them for. Most restaurants, though, unless they're doing an oyster roast, they will do uh, selects. So you're basically going to take this knife, oyster knife, and you're going to pry open. I always use a towel to try to protect my hand until the oyster releases. get down there he doesn't want to let go there he goes so we just call it pop you're gonna open the oyster you can see the nice beautiful oyster a lot of people will judge oysters too on this nice salty brine that you see here you can release the muscle on the oyster release it down here so it's easier to eat when you go to present the oyster So we're gonna do those, like I said, three dishes, seafood dishes, um, using our mussels, using our oysters, and using our shrimp. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Ecolab for sponsoring these videos. Uh, been a long time working with Ecolab, and thank you for letting us do this and keeping our kitchens clean and safe. Also, I'd like to thank the South Carolina Restaurant Lodging Association for for sponsoring and helping also sponsor these videos so we can bring these three tasty low country dishes right to you to your table. All right, so for our first recipe of the low country's favorites, I'm gonna do my rendition of the shrimp and grits. Now there are many different renditions of shrimp, shrimp and grits if you go to Charleston, if you go down to Hilton Head, if you go to Savannah or all over the country. But this is one of my favorite uh, dishes to do. So depending on how you interpret shrimp and grits, um, you know, you'll see a lot of different recipes for it. So I got a nice hot saute pan. I'm going to put in a little bit of oil. I'm going to fortify it with a little bit of butter. And I do that simply because I love the taste of butter. But I know it will burn pretty quickly. So I don't want to uh, have it just butter. You can see the pan is nice and hot. I'm going to go ahead and put in some peppers. Notice I used some nice colorful peppers. I got some uh, bell peppers there, some, some green, some orange, some red. I use purple onion. And I do the onion simply because I love purple onion because of the sugar content. 
And anytime you saute these types of things, you're going to you're going to bring out the sugar. And I don't want to saute them too much simply because I want to try to retain that color uh, for the beauty of the plate that it is. So we're going to lightly saute these. Get a nice little color on them. One of the last things I'm going to add will be the shrimp. I don't want the shrimp to overcook. Most of us agree that shrimp is one of the most overcooked uh, seafood dishes out there, so I just want to lightly get them done, uh, not rubbery, as a lot of times you get them in a restaurant. So we get some really nice color. Notice I didn't, uh, I kept all my peppers about the same size as long as, as well as my onion. I didn't want them too small because I want them to show out the color, the presence, and the flavor on the plate. Some recipes will also call for ham, some will call for bacon. Sometimes I do like sauteing this in the bacon grease um, and then actually using crumbled bacon on top, a nice smoky bacon. It just depends on what recipe you're doing and what you like. So we're gonna go ahead and add our shrimp. I can see beautiful color now on our peppers. We're gonna add our shrimp. You can see them, the nice, starting to turn that nice pink color. Nice hot pan. At this point, if I want to, because they're almost done, I can add a little bit of salt and pepper. I don't want to add too much, and I'll tell you why, because I still want the sea, the salt of the sea to come out into your seafood, so I don't add, I'll usually add a lot of salt to my shrimp and grits, or any seafood dish for that matter. You can always add salt towards the end, be a little unsure, to make sure your flavor profile is just right. So we can see we're getting some beautiful color on the shrimp. Now what I did, we try to utilize everything in the kitchen. So I basically took my shrimp shell and made a shrimp stock. There, there again, I put a little onion in it. I have some thyme and a, just a little bit of celery. I don't want to, and I, I put maybe a half of a bay leaf in there. I don't want to overwhelm the shrimp and the flavor that I'm trying to, to get here. I'm going to add that just slightly there. I want to try to pick up any bits I may have on it on the bottom of the pan. If I want to, I can fortify with a little bit more butter. Melt a little bit of that in. Now that, that will give it a, a nice velvety texture by mounting this butter in. At some point, if you wanted to, you could have used a little white wine. So it depends on what recipe you like and how you're going to see that. Okay, so we don't want to overcook our shrimp, so we're done. What I've done here, I have a beautiful stone ground yellow grits. Depending on how you want to do that, make it with stock, make it with butter, make it with half and half, or cream. Depends on how creamy you want it. So I think we're just about ready to go ahead and plate this. So we've picked a nice little bowl for our shrimp and grits. I'm going to get a nice portion of grits here. We're going to get our shrimp along with our peppers. We can kind of 
put those around the plate. So I got that beautiful velvety broth in the bottom. Just gonna put some peppers on for some beautiful color. I said if you wanted the smokiness, you could do bacon or some type of ham, tasso would be nice, prosciutto, depending on what you want. So we have our beautiful peppers there around the plate. Now let's go ahead and capture some of that raw. Some of that beautiful velvety broth. We're gonna put that on. You can smell the richness of those peppers along with that. Lastly, I could have done a gris, uh, cheese grits. I've just got a little shaves of Parmesan I'm gonna put on top. Some people do like cheese on their shrimp and grits, I do. And then some, for a little bit more color and a little bit more flavor, top it with a few scallions. And there you have it, my rendition of a beautiful southern dish, shrimp and grits.